All right, we are going over embroidery fonts and lettering in this episode. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing fun and approachable. And I wanna do another basic video using the Brother Skitch PP1 embroidery machine because I've been getting questions about how to do things like words or names, that sort of thing. So that's what we'll be covering. Now, if you are new to this channel, you may wanna check out the Brother Skitch PP1 playlist with other videos all about this machine going over the basics. We are only going to be going over the fonts and lettering, but I have a lot of other videos on this one, so make sure to check those out. And I am going to be sharing the Brother Art Spira app with you. So I've got it pulled up here on my phone here. I'm on the home screen now, and in order to get to the fonts in the Art Spira app, so what you do is you click new here down at the bottom and go to design editor. Now there's a free version and a paid version of Artspira, and I'll kind of talk about the differences. The free version is pretty basic. Brother did make a change, and now you can at least import your own external files, which is huge because before when this product first came out, you could not do that, and you had to pay $12.99 per month to do that. All right, so I'm gonna choose my hoop size here. So now I've got a blank canvas here. And you can see down at the bottom, there's a plus and then there's two letter A's. So we're gonna click the A's, that's for text. And then you can type in whatever you want. You can do name, you can do like phrases, anything like that. Now keep in mind though, that the hoop we're working with here, this is a four by four inch hoop. And right now this is the max size that's available for this machine. They also have an additional three by three inch hoop for smaller items. And I've just got this hooped with some basic quilting cotton and some fusible tearaway stabilizer on the back. Full disclosure, I actually tried to shoot this video the other night and it went terribly wrong because I was using metallic fabric, my glimmer solids, and apparently that was not a good idea. So this is the second time I'm shooting this video. All right, so let's type in just whatever. I'm gonna put, I'll do sewing report. So you can do, you know, caps and lowercase and then hit go. All right, so you can see this is like the default font. Now in order to change the font here, you can click on the lettering and then go to font and you'll see the font selection. Now, there's not a lot of fonts. There are 10 fonts available in the free version of Artspira and 20 additional fonts in the premium subscription Artspira Plus. That's not a lot and when I was going through the font, uh, yeah, selection, I'm, yeah, I'm not loving a lot of these. And the free ones, especially, I'm really not super crazy about. There is another way you can get text onto the machine, but right now, as far as I can tell, you cannot import additional fonts, so you can't, won't be able to like bring in another font and type, type it out. You would have to do that outside of the Artspira app and you can do that. And I actually have a video on doing that, but first we will focus on the in-app fonts. So this one's called Bergen. There's a Berlin regular. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of these. There's this Cairo thing, uh, Calgary bold italic, Germany, Kingston regular. Some of these are pretty thin. Liverpool, italic, Maryland. Vermont, and then you can see all of the fonts with the crown next to it, those are premium fonts. So these are a little bit better, but still I actually prefer different fonts. Just to clarify, because I get this question a lot, you can't take standard computer fonts and use them for embroidery. They have to be specific embroidery fonts. So no, you can't just take any font on your computer and digitize it. It specifically has to be digitized for embroidery. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's see which one we will try out here. When I was in my free trial, I did really like the, okay, so you can see if I click on a premium one, it brings up the subscription thing. So you can see our Spear Plus, $12.99 per month or $119.99 per year. We're not gonna do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not, guys, I'm not paying for our Spear Plus. All right, so there's Cairo. Uh, let's try, you know, maybe we'll do Cairo. I might like, yeah, I might like make, obviously it doesn't fit in the frame, so there's a size tab and you can make it smaller or bigger. Also, you can change the character space and I feel like, all right, you can make it 
farther apart, you actually can't make it. I wish you could make it closer together because I feel like these letters are very far apart. I'm actually gonna, let's do a different font. All right, um, maybe I'll do like a cursive one. Let's see, there's Kingston regular, Liverpool. All right, I'll do Kingston regular and then I'll, I'll increase the font a bit. Okay, so we'll make this like, all right, I guess 40.45 inches. All right, hit done now. Now you can do some things, you can move it, you can edit it, you can also change uh, the thread color if you wanted to do that, which I'm actually gonna be doing black thread for this, so we'll keep it the same, but you can actually make some changes. You can also move it, which I will do because we're gonna be doing two designs on this same hoop. So you can rotate it, you know, you can move it, you can flip it, you can do all kinds of stuff. I don't know why you would flip it so it, you know, isn't readable anymore, but hey, whatever. So I'm gonna move it up and down. We'll just keep moving it up. All right, yeah, it's taking a while here. All right, we'll do like, we'll do 0.85, okay. We'll do that, all right. So now I've got everything ready to go. So I'm going to load the hoop up here. All right, and I've got my needle threaded already. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to stitch out here. So I'm gonna hit okay. Done, I know it's not really done. All right, sure, we'll save this. I will save this as sewing report. Hey, at least I won't really have to cut the uh, Cut the threads here. There's not a lot to not a lot to trim. I kind of like the cursive because you know there's no uh, jump stitches. There's not a lot of jump stitches, so that's good. All right, so it brings up my embroidery machine, and I've already got mine connected. So I'm gonna hit transfer here. I have to hit the accept button. All right, close. Yeah, there's the yeah. It's kind of a pain in the butt to actually get to embroidery stuff. You got to go through all these steps, and you can't really skip them. So that's. Not fun, all right, all right, we're not gonna do a trial run, okay. All right, so now we're ready to embroider and all I have to do is hit the start button. I'm really glad, it looks like they made updates because before I used it this week, you had to like undo the hoop before you started stitching and now it doesn't ask you to do that, which is a little bit more convenient. All right, so here is the end of my thread and I'm gonna trim that as soon as it starts kinda, all right. So let's get started here. I'm using rayon thread and I believe it's 40 weight. We're just gonna, I always like to trim the thread. All right. And this machine does actually have the jump stitch trim feature, so that is fairly convenient. And you can see on the app, there's a progress bar, so you can see what stitch it's on.
Okay, it looks like it's done, and that is how you can stitch out text using the fonts within the Brother Art Spira app. Now, again, there's only 10 free fonts and 20 with Art Spira Plus, and if you want to rely on that, you're kind of at the mercy of whether or not Brother decides to add more in the future. They may, you know, who knows, uh, but yeah, I don't plan to use these fonts a lot myself. I kind of like other options. So you're probably wondering, Jen, what are the other options for doing lettering? Like, do I have any other options? And you do. So I actually use some basic embroidery software to do this. It's called Embrilliance. And there is a free version called Embrilliance Express. You can download it for free. I believe it's available for both PC and Mac. And I did a video a few years ago showing that process. So I will put a link to that in the description box and I'll pin it in the first comment as well because that one was a very popular video. A lot of places online you can purchase embroidery fonts. So they have to be specifically embroidery fonts. They're .bx files and you can import these into the embroidery software and then type out word sayings. You can do monograms, you can do all kinds of stuff. And I actually like to purchase a lot of my fonts on Etsy. I found a bunch of random ones that I like, so that's what I mostly use. There may be some free ones out there if you look around. Uh, just do Google searches for embroidery designs.bx files and start hunting for fonts you like. I can import those fonts into Embrilliance and then type out what I want and then I save that as an embroidery design. So while no, you can't import embroidery fonts into the Brother Art Spira app, you can import completed embroidery designs. So do your lettering or your word or your name, save it as a file .pes for the Brother ecosystem and get it onto the app and then you can import it that way. So in order to get it from my computer to my phone, I use this encrypted messaging app called Signal. If I can find some tutorials or anything on how to do that, I'll link them also in the description box. So look for that down for some resources. I also linked up products I use, all that stuff. Uh, some of those are affiliate links, but I purchased everything in this video. And I also purchased the embroidery software. I am an affiliate for Embrilliance, but I bought my own copy and I only became an affiliate after I'd been using it for a few years. It's pretty easy to use and you can purchase different like levels to it. So if you find you want to buy a more advanced version, you can. Embrilliance is actually a product you just purchase once and you own it. You don't need the internet to operate it. It's not subscription based, which is one of the things I love about it. And I upgraded to Embrilliance Essentials. So I can do a little bit more with that, but you can do the, the basic fonts just with the free version. So I'll link that below as well. If you want to check out, again, Essentials is free. You can play around with it and I do have a tutorial on how to do the fonts. So I use the Signal app to get my embroidery files from my computer to my phone. So I'm gonna import it right now. So we'll do my create, go to my creations, hit the plus, and then you'll see import external files. And you can see I've got some files here. So mine is this brother sketch. I just kind of did some random words. I was like, I'll just do the name of the embroidery machine. And again, I created this in Embrilliance Essentials, but you can also do this in Embrilliance Express. And it's, I believe this is the font that just is in the software. So this isn't even a paid font. So, all right, let's pull this up a little bit thicker and I'm gonna need to move this down. Otherwise it's going to overlap with the sewing report. So I'm gonna move this down quite a bit here. And then we'll be stitching that out. I will need to, uh, change out my thread to a different color. So we'll do that. So you can see it takes a little bit here. And then I just need to re-thread to a new color and then we'll be good to go. I think I could probably move it up a little bit. Okay, we'll move it up. All right, yeah, I think that'll be fine. It's about at the halfway point and the sewing report is above the halfway mark. Okay, so I'm gonna hit done. All right, you can also, you can see you can like change the color. So I'm actually gonna do like a green color. Oh. Wait, okay. I did not mean to do that. How do I, I should be able to, okay. Okay, there we go. There's an undo button. So if you do make a mistake, you can fix it. Okay, and I just wanted to change the color to something else. Okay, so we'll do this, uh, we'll do this like seafoam green color or something like that. Okay, 
So we'll hit OK, hit Done. All right, we will save this. OK, so save as Brother Sketch PP1. And we'll do lower since we move this down a little bit. Okay, so it's saving and I'm going to change the thread out now. All right, now we're ready to transfer this. All right, hit the accept button. Okay, close, transfer. Yeah, this, these stages, I wish they like got rid of some of this stuff because yeah, just it just wastes time. So just a suggestion, brother, for a next update, something like that. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. All right, start embroidery, okay. And now we're ready to start embroidery here. Okay, here. Quickly, I'm just gonna, there we go. We're just gonna trim that, okay. This one's gonna take a bit longer. It says uh, 10 minutes, so it'll be, a, it'll be a little bit. You can see that stitch out. And I am using a thread stand because I've just found I run into fewer issues if I do that versus using the spool pin on top of the machine, I don't know, it's a little bit of a headache and I've had some frustrations with the sketch. I'm not gonna lie, it's not been a picnic or walk in the park, let me tell you. When I was trying to shoot this the other night, it was, nothing was going right. Like, I kept getting thread breaks and what I found is the issue is that I was using a Cloud9 Glimmer Solid Scrap and apparently that was a mistake. It does have metallic fibers woven into it. And I believe that was causing the thread breaks. And it also might've been the fact that I was using my cheapo polyester thread. So I switched to my better rayon thread and we'll see, we'll see if this makes a difference. But so far I haven't had any issues. So all of those things seem to work. So if you are running into problems, this is where you have to troubleshoot and just try different things like you know change the factors so it could be the fabric it could be the thread it could be the inner you know the stabilizer it could be whatever you don't know could be the design maybe it's not right for the fabric so when in doubt just do test stitch outs and try to do different things use a different needle so you're gonna have to really kind of work through that if you run into problems because I, I have run into issues with this machine and it has not been all fun.
we are finished. All right, so you just got to look at how to stitch out text using both the in-app font and using a design I imported that I created in a, another embroidery software. Hopefully this video helped because I was getting a lot of questions on how to stitch out text. All right, so here's the thing. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not a sewing machine tech or an expert. So if you do have individual issues with your machine, please reach out to the Brother Support Center or an actual sewing machine tech, but I cannot help people one-on-one -on -one with sewing machine issues. But if you have like some general questions that you think I might be able to answer, the best place to do that actually, you know, again, you're welcome to leave a question in the comment section down below that helps me out, engagement on the video, all that stuff. If you wanna get real-time answers though, guys, I would encourage you to subscribe to my other channel, Sewing Report Live, because every Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern time, I do usually about an hour and a half to a two hour live stream, and you can ask questions. So you can ask, you know, whatever you want. Again, within reason, I'm not gonna be able to diagnose your sewing machine issue, but if you have like general questions about embroidery machines or embroidery or sewing or any of the videos, that's your chance uh, to get a real-time answer. So I would encourage you to join us live because that is what that show is for. Uh, but again, I will link a playlist to the Brother Skitch PP1 embroidery machine videos and also that video that I did about Embrilliance and the fonts because I do think that would be helpful. And if I can locate any tutorials on transferring files using the Signal app, again, we're not going into like computer and tech stuff here other than embroidery machines, but if I can find something for Signal, there are plenty of other ways to transfer files from a computer to a phone. That's just the method that I was like, okay, this will work for me. And I actually have a PC and an iPhone. So I like if I had an, I do have a, a MacBook, but I don't use it for the embroidery stuff. But if you have like all Apple products, I believe you can like what airdrop it or use the cloud or whatever. So that should probably work for you. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate hitting that like button and subscribing to The Sewing Report if you wanna learn more about sewing and embroidery. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.